Have you ever been camping and your RV air conditioner just can't keep up? Well, I made this video to show you how I installed a second air conditioner unit in a 30 amp RV. First, I want to remove my Max Air vent cover. And to do that, there are four nuts holding the cover on. So I just go around the outside and remove all four of the nuts. Once those are off, I can just lift my vent cover up and then I have my vent lid here. So I'm going to go inside and open my vent lid so I can take off the brackets that hold my vent cover on next. I'm going to just unscrew those from the shroud on the outside. And then you can see there's a cover on the inside. I remove these four screws here. Once I get those removed, this little shroud here will just pull straight down. And that's a good time to measure your opening. Make sure that your air conditioner will fit in there. I've already measured mine. I'll show you that in here in a little bit. But it needs to be between 14 and an eighth and 14 and 3 eighths, which most, most of these are. So I'm going to continue on connecting all this stuff here. And that just pulls down. Take a screw out. Then I go back up to the top and around the vent you'll see little screws down in here and they're covered with uh, lap sealant so i need to scrape off the lap sealant and i want to be very very careful not to scrape the roof the rubber roof any of the membrane around this shroud here but i do want to expose all of these screws there's a bunch of screws all the way around once i get them exposed i can go ahead and start removing all of the screws from around this metal piece here. And once I get all the screws removed, I can gently pull up on the metal piece and I can set that off to the side. Now, I was talking about measuring, it's at 14, about 14 and a quarter, so I'm right on the money here, 14 and a quarter on each side. So just wanna make sure you measure before you go too far. And now all the screw holes, I'm going to come back in with some lap sealant. You can use self-leveling. I got the non-self-leveling. That's all they had, but it'll work just fine for me. I'm just going to go ahead and press my lap sealant into the holes that were there. And I've got my unit here. Get a little help putting that on. And I try to get it as centered as possible. Then I go inside, and I have to push up on it. You don't want to slide the unit across the roof because you risk putting a hole in your roof. So I've got someone on top push, pulling it up on it while I'm pushing, and I want to get it centered in the hole here. And you can see there's four bolt holes where my bolts are going to go in, and you want those to be right on the edge, and that'll tell you where the center is. These are my four holes that I'm going to be using a little bit later to bolt my air conditioner down. So you want to measure the thickness of the roof in a couple different places in case you have a tapered roof, which a lot of them are. So we're gonna get our measurement here and then I'm gonna use this chart here. And this chart is what I'm gonna to use to cut my duct divider. So I've got my measurement. It said to take off some of the duct divider. So I just take my utility knife here and cut off two rows to fit my particular roof thickness and it just goes in here my air handler control unit you see it's got foam on one side the unit has foam on the other side so it goes in just like this with the shiny side towards the rear make sure that the air conditioner gets plugged into the control unit just snaps into place here and then i can push my duct divider and I want that to go straight up so that it divides the intake from the outgoing air conditioning. So there's my four spots here. I want to line these up with these very long bolts and they go up into the air conditioner unit on the roof of the RV. Once I get those lined up I can tighten them down. 
There's a couple different hole patterns. You want to get them as straight as possible when you put these in. So now I've got them in, I can go ahead and tighten these down. Don't have to be real tight, but you want to make sure that the insulation between the air conditioning and the roof gets compressed. You can see I'm going to run my wiring from here over to here, across the top, down through the cabinet, and then outside the RV. So I'll have to take this top panel off here. If you don't have a top panel like this, you can always use a wire molding, and I'll use one of those inside of the cabinet, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But there's a bunch of different ways that you can run the wiring for an additional unit. I just found that this way worked very well for me since I've got an ac access up here above the ceiling. So I'll run my wire from here all the way over to above the cabinets and then down and I won't even see it from outside. So you can see my wiring's ready to go. And I'm gonna run it over to there and I'm gonna use a 12 gauge wire. 14 gauge would probably work, but I'm gonna go with a 12 gauge just to be sure. And you can see the hole right here in my rafters. So that's where I'm gonna feed my wire through. I'm gonna use a fish tape and just run that over to the hollow part above the cabinet. And once I get that pushed all the way through, I can put my wire onto the fish tape. Let me get this all the way through here. Now I take my wire and tape it onto my fish tape. Once I get that secured onto my fish tape, I'll pull it back through and my wire will be through the ceiling and it won't be visible from outside. Now, if you don't have this option available, you can always run a wire mold and put your wire in there. It doesn't look too bad, but I wanted to hide this as much as possible, make it look as original as possible and give it a nice clean look like like it was never even done. So now I've got my wire hidden in between the ceiling and the roof. And you can see it's all the way into the front now. So I'm gonna run it over and into the cabinet here next and then down to where I can let it go outside. So I'm gonna fish it all the way over to here. Once I get to here, I'm gonna drill a hole and then run it all the way down. So next step I'm gonna do drill a hole and I want to make sure I don't go too deep so it's just enough to get through the top here of the cabinet then I'm going to run the wire all the way down to the bottom so I want to drill a hole down here at the bottom about the same distance away from the corner as I did on the top because of, like I said I'm going to use a wire mold on the inside of the cabinet just to clean up the inside of the cabinet next I'm going to fish my wire through the little header panel above the cabinets and I want to leave enough extra wire that I can get my wire all the way to the outside of the RV and still have enough to wire it into my outlet so I'm gonna leave a lot extra wire here once I push this all the way through I found a spot behind the drawer here that I can go through to get to the outside of the RV. And I'll show you that the best I can here in a minute. It's kind of difficult to see because it's a very tight spot. It's got a little cubby here. I'm going behind the cubby hole that's inside the cabinet. And you can see it comes out in the drawer. Now this is the unit I'm gonna use, the plug that I'm gonna put on the outside of my RV. So I have to drill the hole through. And this is the part where I've determined the outside location that I want my plug to be. So that's my power outlet and I drill my hole back in underneath the drawer here and I punch through the outside of the RV that's my starter hole now I come back with my hole saw and drill the correct size for my power inlet pick that up on the internet just like I did the air conditioner unit and once I get this drilled through the right side the right size You'll see there's a lot of insulation behind this hole, which is good. So I just have to get my insulation out of there and clean the hole up. Dig out all the packed-in insulation, make sure that nice clean hole here. 
Then I can feed my wire through. And I've got my wire mold here. I can peel off the adhesive and slide the wire inside the wire mold. I've got it cut to size. Slide my wire mold in to the cabinet and then put the cap on and that gives me a nice clean look inside the cabinet. So next I went outside and put the rubber boot on my power inlet, fed the wire through that boot and just pushed it out of the way here for a moment. Cut my wire to length and then I want to strip back the insulation here. It doesn't need to be too far because you want it covered by the rubber boot. And you can see there's three different spots for the wires. Put the green to the ground, white to the silver, and black to the brass here. And then tighten up each screw, and they're marked. You can see the little white dot where the white wire goes, and I've got all three of them in at one time. Just makes it easier to screw this in once I get those tightened down. I can slide my rubber boot back into place and I'm ready to install my power inlet. Got my rubber boot in place, slide my power inlet back into the hole, get it oriented how I want, and then I drill my pilot holes for the mounting. This also comes with a ring that you can screw in the back of the power inlet but my wall was too thick. I couldn't get the ring on, so I chose to go with the three exterior screws, which is just fine. Get those tightened down. It should be a weather tight seal with the rubber O-ring that comes around the outside of this power inlet. And that's where my power is gonna go for my new air conditioner unit. So now I'm going to go back in and wire up the air conditioner on the inside and I want to put my strain relief or my cable lock on first and just slide that over the cable and tighten it down to the box here and then I want to clamp my cable, pull my cable through and I want to clamp it down, kind of hard to see, there you go. Just tighten that down, a little strain relief and strip my wires. And it's just a matter of matching up the wire colors once I get these wires stripped. Hook up the white wire to the white wire and the black wire to the black wire. And my ground wire is going to go to the actual case of the air conditioner unit. I'll just wrap that around the green screw up here. And then I'll tighten that down. And that just leaves the two leads here left. And I've got this all cut to size, so we're ready to put the wire nuts on and get this thing running. Tuck those wires up in here, and then I can put my cover on to cover up, cover up all my electrical connections. Okay, now I'm going to put the header panel back over top of my cabinets. I'm done inside there, so I just put my screws back in. Get that lined up here. And then I can put my screws back in, tighten them up. And all of my wiring will be hidden from the air conditioner unit to the outside of the RV where I need to use my extension cords. So now I need to put my air handler box on, which was purchased separately. And you can see there's screw holes here and here. And I'm going to start by lining up the two knobs. Took my knobs off and I'll match up the knobs where they go and that'll get me started. And I'll put these two screws in here first, just to hold it in. And once I get those two screws in, I'll need to go around the outside of the box and put all the other screws in. There's two on each vent opening. You can see here, here, 
and then there's also two here and here and then another two here and two more back in the back here so I go ahead and put all the screws in around the outside of my air air handler box and then there's some deflector vents that go on the front and the back I just bend those gently and the little pin fits in the hole here and those close I can put my control knobs on and then last but not least I'm gonna put my air filter on here and then I'm gonna use a heavy-duty 10 or 12 gauge extension cord and plug this in most RV parks have a 50 a 30 and a 20 so I'm using both the 30 and the 20 and fire it up and you can see how well it works it's a hot day out and we're keeping cool inside so this is how you install an additional air conditioner unit on a 30 amp AC I'm how to Bob thanks for watching